Chapter 6 Reconciliation Praise be to God and welcome to Catechism class. Let's begin our class with a small prayer. If you close your eyes, join your hands. Let's pray. Dear God, who forgives the repentant sinners, help us to repent our sins and confess them and return to you. We ask this to Christ our Lord. Amen. So my dear children, we are learning about the sacrament of reconciliation. We met Zacchaeus, how happy he was after meeting Jesus. And we also saw that person, how happy he was after confession. So to make a good confession, we need certain points. So what are the requisites of a good confession? Okay, first one, recollect the sins committed. Second one, repent them sincerely. Third one, resolve not to repeat the sins. Fourth one, tell the priest all sins, especially the grave ones. Fifth one, do the penance the priest gives. Okay, the different stages in the sacrament of reconciliation are examination of conscience and repentance for the sins committed. Okay. Pray the prayer for confession. I confess to Almighty God, to the Blessed Mary our Virgin, to Blessed Michael the Archangel, to Blessed John the Baptist, to the Holy Apostles Peter and Paul, and to all the saints that I have sinned exceedingly in thought, in word and deed, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask the Blessed Mary our Virgin, Blessed Michael the Archangel, Blessed John the Baptist, the Holy Apostles Peter and Paul, and all the saints to pray to the Lord our God for me. May Almighty God have mercy on me, forgive me my sins and bring me to everlasting life. Amen. After praying, approach the confessor and confess your sins. First, resolve to avoid the sins and their occasions, persons and places. Secondly, after receiving absolution, make the act of Congregation. Oh my God, I am heartily sorry for having offended thee, and I detest all my sins because of thy just punishment, but most of all because I have offended you, my God, who is all good and deserving of all my love. I firmly resolve with the help of thy grace to sin no more and to avoid the near occasion of sin. Amen. Then fulfill the penance given by the priest and give thanks to God for having given you the grace and peace. Atone for the sins by prayer, works of mercy and sacrifices. Reconcile with all. Contrition are of two kinds, perfect contrition and imperfect contrition. A perfect contrition is that which fills us with sorrow and hatred for sin because it offends God who is infinitely good in himself and worthy of all love. Imperfect contrition is that by which we hate what offends God because by it we lose heaven and deserve hell or because sin is so hateful. But we should always endeavor to have a perfect contrition. Perfect contrition. When we become aware of our sins, we may have various reactions. We may remain indifferent or repent out of fear of God's justice. But the ideal response is to turn to God with love and to have true sorrow as a result of that love. If we have a burning love for God, we will become attentive to even the smallest sin we carry. And every sin we see, we will desire to be rid of. This burning love brings us to an act of perfect contrition by which our love of God purifies the smallest speck of sin on our souls. Do you see your sin? If so, how do you react to it? 
The way you react to your sin is a good measure of your love of God and your trust in His divine mercy. If you react with indifference, your love is lacking. If you react in guilt and fear of punishment, your love is lacking. But if you react with trust in God and total abandonment to His divine mercy, then the love you have in your life will become the source of even more mercy poured upon you. Think honestly about your reaction to your sin and pray that the Lord will bless you with such an abundance of love for Him that you will be overjoyed at seeing that of which you need to repent. Let us pray. Lord, give me such a perfect love for you that I become aware of every sin in my soul that displeases you. As I see my sins, even the smallest of sins, give me the grace to run to you in trust so that your mercy will purify me and make me holy. I love you, my dear Lord. Help me to love you more. Jesus, I trust in you. As you all know, sin makes us impure. By getting absolved from sin, we become pure and grow in love of God. God forgives us, so we do have to forgive others. Jesus gave authority to apostles to forgive sins. Bishops are the successors of apostles. Priests authorized by bishops alone have the authority to forgive sins. Therefore, sins ought to be confessed to the priest only. The priest forgives sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Thus we get reconciled to God, to church, community and ourselves. In the sacrament of reconciliation, repentance for sin is most important. The person who dies in serious sin without repenting deprives himself or herself eternal life. So my dear ones, I have an assignment for you. You have to find from the Holy Bible the persons who gave up their sinful ways and took the path of salvation. So see you all next week. God bless you. Bye-bye. I've heard that it has been said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say unto you that ye resist not evil. Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. Why does this man thus speak blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God only? Why reason ye these things in your hearts? Whether is it easier to say to the sick of the palsy, thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, arise, and take up thy bed and walk,
but that ye may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins. I say unto thee, Arise, and take up thy bed, and go thy way into thine house.